I want to talk about polar coordinates. And I want to talk about polar coordinates so we can actually evaluate limits of functions on two variables. In polar coordinates, instead of thinking of an ordered pair to represent a point in x comma y, I think about every point as a directed distance r from the origin, or the pole, and as a directed angle theta rotated from the positive x-axis. The relationships between polar and rectangular coordinates are here. Well, why might this be useful in evaluating a limit of a function on more than one variable? Well, for this limit to exist, I have to be able to show that I get the same value no matter what path I approach. Polar coordinates are very helpful if we're approaching the origin. I've run three different paths to the origin where the x's and y's all do very, very different things, right? And there's even more paths than that. But what's true about all of them is that as I approach the origin, no matter which of these paths I'm on, r, the distance a point is away from the origin, is going to zero. And in fact, it doesn't matter what theta does as long as r goes to zero. And so the limit of a function on two variables as x, y goes to zero, zero is always the same as the limit as r goes to zero of that same function converted to be a polar function. And when I write this down, I'm thinking about just replacing x with r cosine theta and substituting r sine theta for y. In reality, I can use any of these formulas anytime I want to rewrite the expression for f in terms of r's and thetas. So let's do an example. Let's find the limit as xy approaches the origin of 3x squared y over x squared plus y squared. And let's see if we can find a value. Okay, well right away I can see that I can't plug 0, 0 in. The function's not continuous at the origin. If I thought this limit didn't exist, I might actually try the two path test, but I, no matter what kind of path I plug in, I, I just keep finding the same values. Now, that wouldn't tell me the limit exists because I literally can't exhaust all possible paths. And that's where polar coordinates come in. Because any path that goes through the origin has an r approaching 0. So I'm converting my function into polar coordinates just using the fact x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and x squared plus y squared is r squared. On top, let's see, I have three times, that's going to be r squared times r is r cubed cosine theta sine theta all over r squared, leaving me with the limit is r approaches zero of 3r times cosine theta sine theta. Well, no matter what path I'm on, cosine theta, sine theta is a prime that's going to keep changing. But as r tends to 0, 0 times the number is 0. And so now I know the limit of this function as I approach the origin exists and is 0. OK, so a really cool thing we can do now. The function I started with has a discontinuity at the origin. But by being able to evaluate this limit, I have found that it's a removable discontinuity. I can extend the function. For convenience, I will call the extension big F. Where for all the points that aren't the origin, I'm going to leave the formula alone. So when x, y is not the origin. And when x, y is the origin, I, I want to get out the value 0. And now my function has been extended to be continuous over the whole real plane.